For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms. This ends for all of us in communication. Well, that was a fucking waste. I'm going to start off this theory video with a, with a bit of a mini theory that does connect to some stuff that I'm going to be talking about in this video, but it's not like too relevant. I just wanted to point it out because like, why not? It's not big enough to have its own video about it, but I still wanted to mention it in a video. So for a long time, a lot of people have been pointing out that Vanessa's last name starts with an A, which is revealed in the FNAF AR emails. It's been theorized that Vanessa could actually be an Afton and possibly even Michael Afton's daughter. I originally dismissed this idea for reasons I don't really remember, but after Security Breach came out and now Frailty, I've actually become more open to the idea. You see, Patient 71 in the retro CDs is obviously Vanessa, but where do you play the CDs? It's Michael's room from sister location. <gasps> oh my f Why would the Vanny exposition be in Michael's house unless it's actually Vanessa's house too. The time between Sister Location and FNAF 3 is a whole 26 years, and it's really uneventful. Michael promises that he's going to come and find William at the end of Sister Location, but when he searches for him, he can't find it because William is sealed in the safe room. So when Mike can't find William, it would be logical for us to assume that he just moved on. In the stories Room for One More and Blackbird, we get very clear m parallels to Mike, both of which actually have or had a girlfriend. Is it possible that Mike, after Sister Location, moved on and settled down, maybe getting a girlfriend who later on becomes his wife? Is it possible that he ends up having a child who grows up to work for Fazbear Entertainment, maybe to investigate the company to figure out why her father literally died for this place in FNAF 6? Also, just as a side note, it's interesting that the girlfriend in both Room for One More and Blackbird is named Amber. It's weird that the name specifically is used in both stories, especially since Amber in Blackbird says the line, is there room for one more? Which connects this Amber to the one from Room for One More. It's weird. But anyway, depending on when this location takes place, Vanessa being Mike's daughter would work timeline-wise unless the game takes place any later than 2046, since Mike dies in 2023 and, and 2046 is 23 years after 2023, and Vanessa is 23 in Security Breach. 2035 and 2046 are two of the years where it's possible for the game to take place, since those years match up with the calendar and the pizza plex. 2035 and 2046 both have evidence, evidence to be the year of security breach, but any later than that doesn't really, and if it is any later, then Vanessa can't be Mike's daughter. But it's most likely that security breach is in either 2046 or 2035, so there really isn't anything stopping this from being the case. I bet a lot of people are going to say that Mike's organs being scooped out in this location means he can't have a kid, but that's incorrect, and that's what we'll be talking about at least a little bit in today's video. See, Henry Emily is a really tragic character. After some bad stuff happens, he wants to protect his daughter Charlotte and makes a security puppet to do so, which ends up failing and Charlotte dies anyway. He remains dormant in Fazbear Entertainment for about 10 years until he fully leaves the company, getting FNAF 1 shut down. He disappears for years, but as he says in the Insanity ending, Are they still aware? I hope not. It keeps me awake at night. I could make myself sleep, but not yet. Henry at this point is becoming suicidal, just like he was in the books. The difference is that the reason he's like that in the games is because he just up and left. He kind of let all the murders happen, and he felt guilty for not doing anything to stop it, which is why his 80 year old ass decided to finally do something and destroy everything that was left. I touched on this briefly in the timeline, but after a conversation on Discord, I thought it deserved its own video. Did Henry's plan work? Was it actually a good plan? Was he smart for trying to enact this plan? Well, let's find out. Tune in after this message for my answer. Spoiler, no! Dreadfully, terribly, something is amiss. But don't you mind the feeling, it's 
Despite the definition of Remnant being blatantly explained in the Final Fads of Rights epilogue, a lot of people still misunderstand what Remnant is. Remnant is a metal that has been haunted by something which can be a spirit or an emotion like agony, and has been melted down into a malleable or liquid form. It's been confirmed that Remnant can regenerate you in both this location, the fourth closet, I just said both, but there's also frailty, so all three. So that means that after Mike got his organs scooped out, he was still alive, being kept alive because of the Remnant. And when Ennard left his body, his organs regenerated, which means that it is possible that even after Sis location, Mike had a kid. This also debunks the argument of the odor being used to prove Sis location is before FNAF 1, because if Mike's body was regenerated, he wouldn't even have the odor of a dead body anymore because he wouldn't be a dead body anymore. Not that odor has ever been a good argument in the first place, but at least it can't be used anymore, and if it still is, for whatever reason, I wouldn't even know what to say. In the FNAF 6 scooper blueprints, it is said that there is a possibility that overheating remnant might neutralize the effects permanently. A lot of people don't believe me when I say that the blob is still the missing kids because remnant burns in fire, but if you pay attention to what it actually says here, and what we see with Afton and Security Breach, it clearly doesn't. The blueprints claim that it is only a possibility, and that it might be neutralized. That opens up the possibility of it not happening at all, but to top it all off, it says that specifically it might neutralize the effects. Neutralizing the effects and being destroyed are two completely different things. Think of it like this. Say that it was actually a certainty that it would neutralize the effects. I, I just pretend that it is a certainty. Even then, that doesn't mean Remnant would burn. I actually believe that William Afton actually died in the Springlock failure, but just for the sake of proving my point, let's just, just pretend for a second that William is alive and is being kept alive by Remnant. When he was in the fire, he would have died because the Remnant's effects are neutralized, so they wouldn't regenerate or keep him alive anymore. But the Remnant itself would still exist as it's only the effects that are neutralized. TLDR, Remnant doesn't burn in fire, it's only said that it's a possibility that the effects would stop working while the Remnant and the spirits contained in it would still exist. But here's the thing, even the effects don't stop working in fire. Consider this, in the Afton ending in Security Breach, we see Flesh is literally growing over the endoskeleton of Burn Trap, which implies that he has Remnant in him regenerating more structure back to his body, and we burn Afton many times here and nothing happens. Basically burning Remnant does nothing. But then, why would the hypothesis of Remnant maybe burning in fire have ever come to fruition? Well, in the fourth closet, it's shown that heat does in fact hurt the spirits in the Remnant, which could have easily led to that misconception. But that doesn't mean that Remnant would actually burn and be destroyed in fire, because how would hurting a dead person release their spirit? That makes no sense. <laughs> But just thinking about it from Henry's perspective, he read it as being possible that Remnant's effects are neutralized by fire, and he pulled a bat fleck and took that as an absolute certainty. But wait, if Remnant's effects aren't burned in fire, wouldn't that mean that even Michael Afton himself is still alive? I think it might. So that means what I said before about Vanessa being Mike's daughter only being possible depending on when Security Breach takes place? Technically not if Michael Afton is still alive, but that might be a theory for another day. Moving on, let's talk about William and the Puppet. Remnant is a melted haunted metal, but a spirit simply haunting an endoskeleton doesn't classify as Remnant unless that endoskeleton is melted down, just like the, the animatronics in the fourth closet, or not the animatronics, but the endoskeletons from the FNAF 1 animatronics in both the fourth closet and the Remnant in the Fun Times in Sister Location. But an animatronic possessed by a spirit wouldn't just burn in fire even if Remnant did because this wouldn't classify as Remnant. So if Afton is dead, and either way in the case of the puppet and Scrap Baby, burning them wouldn't do anything. But furthermore, here's what really makes Henry an idiot. The puppet and William were both in the FNAF 3 building when it burned down. Sure, they ended up escaping, but that was after they had already been burning in the fire. Because as we see in Sister Location, William is still inside the building after it's already been burned down, meaning that he was trapped in there until eventually he did escape, as we see in the at the end of FNAF 3 in the newspaper. William and the puppet both survived the fire completely fine. Obviously they did if they made it to FNAF 6, so why would Henry think that just doing it again would work? Let's think about this for a second. Henry's logic is literally like, 
Ooh, these two animatronics just survived a goddamn fire. Let's burn them again and assume it'll kill them this time because why the hell not? Ha 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 ha. Oh, and while we're at it, let's burn Mike and Molten Freddy, who have a remnant in them which is said to possibly burn in fire. So let's just take that as an absolute certainty. Also, let's burn Circus Baby, even though nothing about her is even implied to burn in fire. Yay! And in the process, to make sure I have no idea when it fails miserably, not if, but when it fails miserably, let's kill my 80-year-old ass too! Like seriously, Henry is such a goddamn clown. I mean, I love the ending. It is absolutely legendary. Just watching it after being the game is so satisfying until you actually t stop and think about it. Even after I found out all this, even after I realized that the FNAF 6 fire absolutely did not work, or at least there was no reason it should have worked, even when I played FNAF 6 myself, I loved the ending and I kind of forgot all about that just because the ending speech is so cool. But that doesn't mean the ending would be satisfying if it had been the ending. It would not make any sense. I want you guys to understand that this isn't just my opinion. Don't dislike the video because I'm hating on the ending. Because if we're being honest, this plan is completely nonsensical no matter how legendary of an ending it is. A lot of people complain that Security Breach ruined the FNAF 6 ending, but no. The FNAF 6 ending literally had no way of working in the first place, and if it somehow did, that doesn't make any sense at all. A lot of people do believe that the FNAF 6 ending worked, just because the ending was awesome and that they want to believe that it worked. But it shouldn't have, wouldn't have, and almost definitely did not. Henry is literally the only person who logically would have died in the fire. It's to the point where FNAF 6 is just an elaborate suicide, and Henry is like 80 at this point. Unfortunately, Henry isn't going to live much longer, so if he wanted to kill himself, why didn't he just let nature take his course? Apparently burning alive is the most painful experience in the world, and Henry decided that that was how he wanted to die. Like I seriously can't get over what this clown thought the ideal outcome would be. Henry is an absolute clown, if he actually thought that this would work. And even if he did. Why didn't he just not include himself? Why didn't he stay out of the fire? Why did he let himself die in the process? If he dies in the fire too, which he clearly does, then he will have no idea whether it would work or not, and even if it was likely that it would work, why take the risk? It really just shows that Henry is really just an incredibly huge dumbass. And even if you believe that the fire did work, Henry is stupid for just blindly assuming that it would without any evidence suggesting that it actually would. But what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with this literal objective fact about Henry's dumbassery? Let me know in the comments what you think, and I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then please do leave a like and subscribe if you want to, but I'll see you all in the next video.